Geckos are a group of small carnivorous lizards found on every continent except Antarctica. These charismatic animals are best known for defying gravity by sticking to walls using their toes, which are covered in velcro-like hooks. There are plenty of videos about how these hooks interact with the vertical surface to allow the gecko to stick, relying on relatively weak van der Waals forces that sum to produce enough of an interaction to keep the gecko from tumbling down. But how do geckos form these incredible structures in the first place? This is a transverse slide taken from a gecko's toe. If you want to look yourself, you can find a copy of the slide on the website. There's a link in the description. We can see some bone and muscle heading down to the tip of the toe, which ends in a claw. On the top surface, we have normal scaled reptile skin. On the bottom surface, the part that would contact the vertical wall, the skin is thrown into many folds, essentially elongated scales. These are called lamellae. Jumping back up to the normal skin, you can see a layer of laminar acellular material on top of the epidermis. This is a layer of keratin, similar to the material that covers the skin and nails of mammals. Compare the structure of this keratin to that on the lamellae. Here, the keratin layer produces these amazing thin fronds which stick out. These are the setae, the parts that interact with the surface and give the gecko toe its sticky properties. If you look carefully at the tips of the setae, where the slides is in focus, you'll be able to see that each one has even tinier projections from the tip. On a scanning electron microscope, you can appreciate that the tip of each seta is formed of hundreds of tiny projections, delicately shaped into a spatula. Each of these iterations of lamellae covered with projections that have further projections with tiny spatula tips is there to increase the surface area and maximise the interaction at a molecular level between the gecko and the wall. Looking at these structures, it seems incredible that a biologic system could produce them. Do they just grow out from the epidermis? But there are no cells in the keratin layer to help guide and shape the ceta tips. What's going on here? As a starting point, let's have a quick look at normal skin. Using a light microscope, the keratin layer looks flat and homogenous. This is not the reality. This keratin layer is formed of several different types of keratin. The most superficial layer is called, and you'll pardon my pronunciation, the Oberhauchen layer. In several species of gecko, this layer is not flat, but is covered in tiny keratin projections called spinules. The ceta are derived from the same Oberhauchen layer of the skin, in essence making them enlarged and modified spinules. So the secret to the formation of ceta must be similar to the process of forming spinules. This process occurs when the skin sheds. I'm not sure if I've been particularly lucky with this specimen of gecko toe, but it looks to me like the lamellae are in the process of preparing to produce new ceta. Compare the thickness of the epidermis on the top of the foot compared to the lamellae. At the top of the foot, the epidermis is only a few cells thick, being composed of a basal layer of germ cells, the stratum basale, and some suprabasal differentiated keratinocytes. Looking at the lamellae, there are far more layers of cells with very different morphologies. Some of them are quite beautiful. Look at this layer here. It's so geometric and organised. After much consideration, I've identified five cell layers and labelled them. There's the usual stratum basale with some suprabasal keratinocytes on top. The next two layers are the large beauties, the clear cell layer and the lacuna layer. These two layers have grown between the suprabasal keratinocytes, forming two separate layers, an old on top and a new beneath. The old layer of suprabasal cells produce the current set of ceta. It's the job of the new suprabasal cells to produce a new layer of ceta. So this is where the magic happens. The suprabasal cells begin to produce corneous beta proteins, or CBPs, the material that makes ceta. CBPs are a diverse family of proteins found in the skin of birds and reptiles and form a large number of hard structures like beaks, claws, feathers and scales. The CBPs that form ceta in geckos interact in such a way that they form filaments which begin to extrude from the surface of the suprabasal cells into the clear cells above. The clear cells have specialised proteins in their cell cytoplasm that form part of the cytoskeleton. These rigid proteins are arranged to mould the tips of the ceta into their spatula formation. But how do we know this? Unfortunately, we can't see any of these processes using a light microscope. Here we can see the ceta growing underneath the clear cell layer, like in these excellent photomicrographs I found while researching. This is accompanied by images from transmission electron microscopes that show the ceta growing into the clear cells, 
with accumulations of proteins in the clear cell cytoplasm ready to mould the CETA tips into their final shape. This image shows the interface between a clear cell and a suprabasal cell. You can see the nucleus of the suprabasal cell here. Within the suprabasal cell cytoplasm, there are black granules of CPP accumulating to form CETA, which extend into the clear cell cytoplasm where they're moulded by the cytoskeleton. When the process is complete, the clear cell and lacuna cell layers break down. White blood cells enter the space and the overlying suprabasal cells are shed along with their keratin layers. This leaves the newly formed CETA below to continue with the work until they themselves are replaced by the next generation. So that's a brief summary of how geckos are able to form the amazing microscopic structures we can see on their toes. If you're still watching at this point, well done. Perhaps you found this video interesting and would consider subscribing or giving this video a like. If you want some more content on histology of unusual species, you can check out this video on the digestive tract of scorpions. Or head over to the channel page where there should be a series on normal histology of a wide variety of other animals. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.